Professor, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, really have to thank you in the name of the Brazilian Society of Cardiology for having you here. We could, we could have nobody uh, better than you for this interview. Professor Serraus uh, is in the uh, National University of Ireland, Galway, in Galway, Ireland, and also from the Imperial College of uh, London in the United Kingdom, a uh, world uh, well-known professor of cardiology. Now, Professor, uh, going straight to the point, a uh, number of studies have compared surgery with angioplasty for the treatment of uh, patients with left main disease. One of these studies, one of the most recent studies, in fact, the Excel uh, trial, recently uh, released its five-year results, which were published in the New England Journal of Medicine in November 2019. And in the article, uh, I'm going to read the uh, conclusions of the authors. Uh, there was no significant difference between PCI angioplasty and cabbage surgery with respect to the rate of, comp of the composite outcome of death, stroke, or myocardial infarction for patients with left main disease of flow or intermediate anatomical complexity. Now, after the publication of the Excel study, uh, there have been some questioning related to the conduction in the interpretation of the trial. Well, Professor Rouse, uh, you are one of the most renowned scientists, scientists, scientists in the cardiovascular field of all times, <laughs> and uh, leading many of these studies about uh, the treatment of coronary disease and, and uh, more specifically the left main disease, comparing PCI with uh, angioplasty. And actually, uh, you have participated in elaboration in the conduction of the Excel trial since its beginning. Professor, what are the truths about the accusations uh, against the Excel trial investigators are facing right now? Uh, uh, how, how, do you, uh, how do you put this into perspective? So I think that before dealing with um, a scientific issue, I think we have to respond to what is in your own vocabulary, some kind of uh, um, accusation. And the first one is the word manipulate, yeah? which is a word that uh, David Taggart used in Barcelona at the AX meeting, the meeting of the surgeon. And um, it was quite uh, a very strong uh, statement. And uh, later on, he has retracted uh, the use and these accusations, saying that uh, uh, there was nothing wrong. And in a meeting in... Uh, December in New York, uh, he officially retracted the uh, accusation and he said, I've, we've, uh, there are absolutely no attempt in the Excel trial to manipulate and distort the data that was actually presented. So that, that's his own text and his own slide uh, because he knew that it was uh, probably he was carried away during the talk and used that uh, very uh, uh, strong words, uh, also saying that the whole thing was uh, disgraceful. The same is true from the change in the definition of the myocardial infarction. The definition has always been there, uh, was in the design paper published in uh, Eurointervention, was in the protocol uh, submit, of course, to the New England Journal of Medicine on two occasions. And all this year, and we are talking about something start in 2007, that was the first meeting in New York. The first recruitment was in 2010. All this year, the definition was there. You know, uh, when we met in New York for the first time with the surgeon, the debate was the following. Uh, we interventional cardiologists didn't want to have revascularization include as an irreversible event. We considered that the three irreversible event 
was death, stroke, and MI. And um, the surgeon wanted to have a very long follow-up, at least five years. So initially, we make a, a bargain, a deal about we will do median, median three years, and we will have as an endpoint all-cause mortality, stroke, and MI. And if you go to the paper, the design paper in Euro intervention, I think page uh, 767, you see exactly the definition of the myocardial infarction. Uh, the stroke also is very detailed. We don't have the time to go through, but you can tell to the, to the audience that if they want to read the definition, they are there in the Euro intervention. And you know, already in syntax, we use uh, CKMB 5 PQ wave or 10 CKMB. Why? Because that's very prognostic. We know that. And when we did this, the Excel, we had again that discussion about the fact that troponin is less prognostic and the surgeon will have a lot of troponin post-surgery. If you do cardioplegy, you will have a, a serious eleven elevation of troponin. And if you do uh, off-pump during the occlusion of the vessel, you will have also uh, troponin. So we went to something which is a very robust, who does not penalize the surgeon, and which is related to the previous trial, which was syntax. And uh, that definition has never changed. So that's the first, uh, the second point. The other point of, uh, as you call, uh, accus uh, accusation is that um, there was no concealed data. In the BBC um, broadcast, there was obviously shortly on the screen some spreadsheet on data of enzyme. It was a kind of uh, local proof to say we have some data on uh, on troponin and enzyme but we we don't know we don't recognize this uh, spreadsheet basically so uh, it's unclear who has provided that kind of information maybe not adjudicate maybe just circulating on incomplete data of uh, troponin and as i said i mean uh, it was optional, the troponin. It was maybe a scientific secondary uh, objective among uh, 30 others' uh, objective. So uh, that's something that uh, uh, we have decided now with the European Society of Cardiology to provide to them uh, all kind of information and do also a major meta-analysis on the four a trial on uh, left main. Uh, the last point is that we didn't follow a warning from the data and safety monitoring board. No, that's not correct because all the time they allow us to continue uh, the trial, so we never get. They had some concern of everybody that at the median time of three years, and at three years, you see the crossing of the curve in all-cause mortality, yeah? So, uh, and that has been, the two curves have diverged uh, even more with times. You could see that on figure three. I mean, it's in the paper. It's also in the abstract. I mean, with the absolute difference, as I said, of 3.1% and the relative uh, difference of 38%. Uh, and as a trialist, I mean, I always said what counts for me is that the patient are alive and happy. Basically, qualities, quality of life uh, adjusted for survival. Uh, if you do 10 years alive without a stroke and without a myocardial infarction, it's a major benefit. So I look always to uh, all cause mortality because it, you don't need to uh, adjudicate. Now, what is puzzling is that if you look at noble, if you look at syntax, if you look at pre-combat, 
and you pull all these data, and we have done that, and the European society is again going to look at that, you see that the hazard ratio is a uh, fixed effect or random effect is uh, 1.06 and 1.04. So basically there is no difference when you pull all this uh, patient in all cause mortality. And we are talking here about uh, 4,400 patients. It's not a small number of patients randomized. That's the biggest meta-analysis on left main. So Personally, I'm not concerned by the all-cause mortality. Why it diverged in the uh, Excel is a little bit puzzling. I mean, there have been uh, subtle uh, critical event adjudication where there was some more cancer and some more septicemia. Is that play of chance? I mean, it's not power for all-cause mortality. You know, a trial. A trial, you have to find the rule of engagement. And the rule of engagement is, is a bargain between power, sample size, and goal. Now, as I told you, we decide to go for all-cause mortality stroke and MI, a median of three years, and then we had a number of patients, which was 1,900, plus the, the 1,000 in the registry. So that's a little bit uh, a response to the... Uh, uh, four element of quote to quote accusation. What I have seen that I have never seen before, I did a trial with Sir MacD Cabri, I did with uh, Felix Unger Arts, and then Arts 2, and then Syntax with uh, Frederick Moore, real all commerce, three vessel disease, and main stem. I've never seen that kind of uh, uh, social media coverage of a trial. And I mean, it's nothing to do with science, but today we are in the world of social media. Uh, Mr. Trump can achieve more, more things by Twitter than anybody else. Uh, and, and that's a catastrophe because if you say something and at the same moment you cannot react, it's viral. It, the, the, the information in social media is viral. And, and you see in days things circulating. You are quietly working in your operative room or in your cat lab, but in the meantime, there's a lot of information circulating. So that's a little bit what uh, I could say about uh, that. Do you have another question? Yes, Professor. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, large clinical trials, such as DXS and many others, those are very expensive uh, journeys. Those are very expensive projects. Uh, somebody has to pay for it. You need a sponsor. Sometimes the industry, sometimes the, the government, some, sometimes other sources. Uh, do you think, and if so, how to protect the quality of the data coming from the, uh, coming from the trial, uh, how to protect from the bias that may be inserted because it's a sponsored initiative. Uh, <clears throat> of course, and the reason I'm, I'm asking you this is that because there are sciences, uh, there are projects that are not very expensive, so you may not have this bias, but large clinical trials are always a very expensive uh, initiatives. How do you protect from that? Yeah, I mean, I think if I have to rank the quality of the trial, uh, looking at my experience, my personal experience of uh, 35 years, I would say that the trials sponsored by the industry have the highest quality. Then the trial sponsored by government of uh, grant of the European Union and so, and finally, the investigator meeting, you know, investigator-driven trial. If you look, for instance, in the DAPT, you will see that there is severe under-reporting. There is a lot of trial which are not complete. The recruitment was slow and was not finalized. On the other hand, when you work with the industry, it depends very much, very much, on the quality of the leadership, uh, 
the quality of the steering committee, the personality of the investigator. I don't want to talk about my personal experience, but obviously what we did on Absorb, for instance, was fully supported by Abbott. It, it was a major, major project. But you know also that when I start to see late scaffold thrombos, I did not hesitate as soon as possible to get public, to publish the things in the Lancet and report that at the TCT. And it was a, a major setback for this industry. And of course, there was some pressure to uh, minimize the things and so But I think it depends mainly on the quality of the investigate sponsored by the industry, but the quality, the amount of money is, is sometimes phenomenal. I mean, I've done trial uh, for pharma above 120 million pounds, you know, this, this big trial, nobody has this amount of money. Uh, certainly the syntax was, was above 80 million dollars, uh, but that makes the quality. I can tell you the the way uh, in Excel, there is already uh, more than seven, uh, 52 uh, secondary paper is because the database is of superb quality because people like uh, Craig Stone, myself, went in detail with all the surgical committee, medical committee to be, to be sure that we had maximum of information in this trial. So that's a little bit my response. It depends on the quality of the investigate, on the doctors. Okay, well, Professor, thank you very much. I have no words for that. And uh, wish you a nice weekend. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.